the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents the Cavalcade of America. Tonight's star, Ginger Rogers. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade is called Emma, just Emma, and begins in the Civil War month of September in the year 1861. Now, here's our star, Ginger Rogers, as Nurse Emma Edmonds. Curious, isn't it? I was happy. The war was all around me. The field hospital was clotted with the cries of the wounded. But I, Nurse Emma Edmonds, was happy. How curious. How foolish. How false. His name was James Vernon, lieutenant in the Army of the Potomac. He was quite tall. His hair was black. And the day I first saw him, there was blood on his cheek from one wounded eye, while he seemed to grin at me from the other. Well, now, you look fine, even with only one eye to look from. Now, take your hand away. Let me see it. Of... When were you uh, shot? The tree was shot. This eye caught a splinter. Emma? Uh, hold it to the light. I will. Emma? Mm. I think I can manage. Unless you prefer to wait for Dr. Edmonds. Do you? I do not. I prefer Emma. Lieutenant, it is quite improper for you to... Call you Emma? Well, the orderly told me your name, and that means we've been properly introduced since he's a very... Orderly, orderly. <laughs> now, hold your eye to the light again, please. And hold very still, Lieutenant. I'm not a still man. I've gathered that already. Now, this will hurt. No, I'm not worried. I heard my mother say once to a Scotch Presbyterian clergyman... Who? Oh, I'm sorry. That she was afraid I'd meet with some violent death. No. <laughs> but he... Looked at me, and then he looked at... Almost. And he said, Ah, well, my good woman, if the wean is born to be hanged, he'll ne'er be drowned. There. There, it's out. And nearly as long as my fingernail. Lucky it came out in one piece. Ah, but then I'm a lucky man. Has anyone ever told you that you have beautiful hair? Lieutenant, aren't you ever serious? Never. So where will you be tomorrow? Because that's where I'm going to be tomorrow. Those first days together. Moments when we almost forgot the war. But there were other moments, more sober moments, during the next weeks. When he stared at the ground, grew moodily. Go back to your patients, Emma. How oh, it's pleasant here with you, Jane. Go back. There are the sick and the wounded and the soon-to-be dead. They need you. I've worked 11 hours, James. This half hour belongs to me. It's wrong. <laughs> Who are we to know such contentment in the midst of so much pain? James, why did you join the Union Army? Because... Well, because... There's wrong and there's right. And maybe I believe most of the right this time is with the Union. And I would do something for what is right. I'm going back. There's wrong and there's right, as you just reminded me. And it's right for me to go to them who need me more. Uh, if I haven't said so... I'm very fond of you. A very good night, James. And to you, Emma. A very good night. It was the last time I was to see him alive. While riding toward the battle line, he was struck by a mini ball. The 
Lieutenant James Vernon, without a shroud or coffin, wrapped in his own blanket, his body was committed to the cold ground. A very good night to you, James. Emma. Oh. Oh, it's you, Dr. Edwards. Sitting alone in the evening air is bad for you, my dear. I'll take a physician's advice. It would go better with you if you wept. I have no tears now. Tears that are delayed cost more. Now, Emma, you're a woman. Cry. It would be good for you to cry. Dr. Edwards, I wish to resign as field nurse. I want to go to war. A very personal war. Now, you're distraught, my dear. A few days of leave. I know what I need, and it isn't leave. Well, you can't avenge James. Besides, only men put on a uniform and fight. Only a man can... Wait a minute. I wonder. Yes, Doctor? Emma, today I attended a staff conference at headquarters in which the general... Come, Emma. Let's pay a visit to the general. Dr. Edwards was wrong to send you. This is man's work. Why? Are such things governed by a code of law? You're a nurse. Not anymore, General. I have resigned as of this instant. You may not resign, Nurse Edmonds. Moreover, the work you want to do is hazardous. Hazardous in the extreme. One of our best agents was apprehended yesterday. This morning, two rebels we captured informed us that our agent has already been hanged. It could happen to you. If the wean is born to be hanged, it will ne'er be droned. Eh? I beg your pardon, nurse? Oh, uh, nothing, General. I was just remembering something a dead man told me. You're a nurse. It's your duty to save the lives of our wounded men. By going through the rebel lines and returning with information, I can prevent men from becoming wounded. Nonsense. You'd be stopped in an hour. Would I, sir? What, General? This is a bottle containing a solution of silver nitrate. I rub a little on my finger, like this. Well, your finger's turning black. Well, all right, all right. Ten fingers can turn black, two hands, two arms, my face. General, here is my disguise. You mean... Yes. Yes, of course. Negroes are constantly being captured and recaptured between the lines. No one will ever suspect a Negro woman. I uh, won't be a woman. A Negro man can stay closer to headquarters without arousing suspicion. Uh, what about your yellow hair? We can be shaved off. I can get a wig. I can dress in men's clothing. I can be a Negro field hand. General, you must allow it. I can do it. Believe me, I can do it. All right. Can you ride a horse? Indeed, as well as any man. It's against my strongest inclination. Can you shoot a pistol? Try me, General. All right. Now listen carefully. We've met with nothing but reverses. Wherever our troops have been deployed, we've been surprised. Our general shot to pieces. Part of the reason is faulty intelligence on our part. We've got to know the strength of the rebels camped against us. I said it before, General. Try me. Very well. I want to know how many troops they have. How many reinforcements, how many rifles, how many cannon. To save lives, to win this war, I've got to know. Be prepared to go through the rebel lines near Yorktown. <laughs> My head was shaven, and I was given a wig and some men's clothing. And at half past nine o'clock, I passed through the outer picket line of the Union Army and made my way, on foot now, toward the rebel lines. The night was cold. The ground was damp. I was afraid. When I had gone what I hoped was a safe distance... I laid down and rested until morning. Raise your hand. Don't shoot. Oh. You heard what I said, Yankee. Get those hands up. My hands up. Get them higher. Higher. Don't shoot. Well, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure enough, sir. Come on out to the light where I can see you, Yankee. Coming faster. I'm coming mighty faster. What? 
And I thought you was a Yankee. Ha <laughs> doggone. Just what I was a thinking, Major. <laughs> doggone. Trying to run away from your master? Uh, no, sir, Major. I was uh, trying to run back, Major. You know very well I'm no Major. Boy, what you trying to do? Who are you trying to fool going back to your master? <laughs> Come on. I'm taking you to the captain. Ladies and gentlemen, this broadcast of the DuPont Cavalcade of America, starring Ginger Rogers and sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, marks an anniversary. For it was 15 years ago this week, on October 9th, 1935, that our first program was broadcast. And Cavalcade went on the air with these words. DuPont, one of America's oldest industries, presents the Cavalcade of America a series of episodes from American history, stories portraying the qualities that have guided the American people from the earliest days to the present time. It is the hope of DuPont that these human dramas will help perpetuate the finest traditions of American life because these same traditions of service, courage, and hope have always played a vital part in the progress of DuPont, whose research chemists are carrying on in the same spirit discovering and creating useful products so that the American people may have better things for better living. Tonight, as we start our 16th year with this 669th broadcast, that message still expresses the meaning and purpose of the DuPont Cavalcade. And on this anniversary, we feel it's appropriate to rededicate Cavalcade to those principles stated on its first broadcast 15 years ago to help perpetuate the finest traditions of American life. The DuPont Cavalcade continues, starring Ginger Rogers in Emma, the story of a nurse who disguised herself as a Negro boy to act as a spy for Union forces during the Civil War. My heart was pounding when they brought me to the Confederate captain. But he merely glanced at me and, with a shrug of indifference, gave an order to the sentry who brought me in. Take him to the overseer. He's been put to work on the fortifications. They believed my disguise. Oh, I breathed a prayer of thanksgiving. I was conducted to a breastwork which was in course of construction, where there were about a hundred colored people at work. Confident I, as I worked in the gravel pit, a Negro close by began to stare at me. Boy, boy, I'm talking to you. Yes, sir. Ye yes, sir. What's your name? Uh, Willie. Yes, sir. Aren't you sure? Sure enough, I, I was mighty doggone sure. You use a heap of language. Don't you, boy? Let me see your hands. Well, let me alone. I'm going to hit you with my shovel, sure enough. Boy, you just ain't convincing. I ain't. You ain't. There's genuine colored folks, and there's imitation colored folks. You, boy, pure imitation. Oh, for heaven's sake, not so loud. That's better. Please, please, I... I'll give you five dollars not to say anything, please. Money ain't any use to me. Keep your money, boy. Keep your mouth shut. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. You better fill your wheelbarrow. The overseer's looking this way. Go on, get to work. For a few minutes, I was in a panic. Then I tried to submerge my fear in work. I labored there under the broiling sun... 
My back ached and the muscles in my arms and thighs quivered with fatigue. And when it seemed I could not survive another moment, there was a most welcome voice. Sit down, boy. I'll fetch you a bit. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm so tired. You've been working without oh. sin. Tomorrow, don't put quite so much on your shovel. When you load your wheelbarrow, fill it only halfway. When you lift it, use your whole body. Like this. It'll save your strength. Oh, you're good to me. Why? Just, just tell me why. Don't ask so many questions. You've been more than kind. Kindness ain't enough. Mm, I don't know. What could be better than kindness? The truth. Now, you're the one asking questions, aren't you? All right. I won't ask any questions. But I'll tell you something. I watched you. You're dressed like a boy. You look like a boy. Only you ain't a boy. You're a woman. Oh, if you... If you repeat that to anyone, I'll, I'll hang for it. I won't repeat it. But there's smarter people than me. And if I could see what you really are, there'll be others to see what you really are. Ma'am, you're in danger. <laughs> Yes, I was in danger. But there were tens of thousands of Union soldiers in greater danger. And there was the memory of a tall lieutenant in the Army of the Potomac, who was now past all danger. I had a duty to perform. There were things I had to learn, information I had to bring back, and there was not much time. Where are you going? I'm going to take a walk. You had a hard day. You're tired. Walking is good for fatigue. Ma'am, you'll stay put. Just where you are. You've been good to me so far, and I appreciate it, but this is none of your business. It is my business. You're a spy, ma'am, ain't uh, you? You're a spy for the North. Oh, how does that make me your business? You've been seen talking to me, spending a lot of time with me. If they capture you, they'll hang us both. Look, there's certain information I need to know, and I won't know it by staying here, will I? It ain't safe now. In a little while, I'll go with you. No. Either together, ma'am... But not at all. I guess you win. All right, we'll go together. We've gone over everything. This is the last place. Look close. How do you count it, ma'am? I'd say 12 guns in that battery there on the beach. Mm -hmm. How do you, how big do you make them to be? I'd say 32 pounders. Oh, 12, 32 pounders. I've got it. Now, how many on that landing now? Eight, 64 pounders. Eight, 64 pounders. I'll remember that. Now, come on. Let's get out of here. What's that noise out there? I said, what's that noise? What are you two doing here? Evening, Captain. What are you doing here? We work here. Us is building up the fortification. Why aren't you asleep? Too hot to sleep tonight, sir. That's not good enough. Corporal. Yes, Captain. These men are lying. You know what to do with them. I'd do, sir. And do it. If they make one move to run away... I shoot. Correct. You shoot. Now take them off. Are these them? These are them, all right. Two of you, stand up. Boy? Yes, sir? What's this here in my hand? Uh, a rifle. What's this in my other hand? Oh, an another rifle. What does a rifle do? It shoots. Bullets. Shoots bullets and it kills you dead. Stone dead. <laughs> you understand that, boy? <laughs> Carson, stop that. Stop behaving like a bully. Yes, Captain. Remember, you're a soldier in the Confederate Army. Boy? Yes, sir, Captain. Those two rifles are for you. Us, sir? Sure. Sentry duty. Sergeant, you scared this poor boy so he's almost turned white.
It was true. The silver nitrate solution was wearing off. And I was actually turning white. Fortunately, they marched Wilbur and me into the darkness. And soon we found ourselves in an open field very close to the Yankee line. Ma'am? Yes, Wilbur? You scared? Terribly scared. You got good reason. That stuff's wearing off fast. You won't fool anybody another day. Well, then I guess I'll... I'll have to go tonight. Yes, ma'am. Straight ahead. Toward them trees. That's where the Yankee troops are. I'm... I'm deeply grateful to you, Wilbur. I'm the one to be grateful, ma'am. I was born a slave. I was raised a slave. And now, there's folks going to war, so I don't need to be a slave no more. The Yankee lines are straight ahead, ma'am. And that's the way to go. Straight. When they had buried the man I loved, I didn't cry. And when I'd been standing alone and frightened between the rifles of North and South, I also didn't cry. But now, at the quiet words of a man who'd been enslaved all of his life, now I cried. And perhaps my tears were an atonement for all the sorrows and agonies of the living. On my hands and knees, I began to creep slowly toward the Union lines. They had heard me in the dark. I tried to make my body small. These were not bullets fired by the army. These were the bullets of Union soldiers. I was bringing back information to save their lives, and they were trying to kill me. I clawed the earth with my fingernails until they split. I bit my lip until it bled. And then I, I crawled a little farther and fell into a muddy crater. It was smaller than my own grave would be. But for a few hours, at least, I was safe. In the first light of morning, I tied my white handkerchief to the barrel of my rifle and signaled the Union sentries that I was coming in. Hold your fire up! Hold your fire! Who are you? What are you doing out there? Oh, it'll take too long to say. Please, please don't waste any time. Take me to the general right away. I'm glad to see you, Emma. I can't tell you how glad. Oh, General, I, I've memorized certain details. Will you, will you give me a moment, sir? Whenever you're ready. Ah. <sighs> At 12, 12.32 pounders on the beach at Gloucester Point. Yes. 8.64 pounders on Yorktown Landing. Yeah. At Fort Grafton, at least two ten inch. Oh, General, I... It will take me about ten minutes to write it down. Take all the time you need, Emma. Meanwhile, sir, under the inner sole of my left shoe... You'll find a drawing of the Confederate fortifications around Yorktown. Wonderful, wonderful. Miss Edmonds, I wonder if you know what you've done for the Union cause. Oh, I'm too tired to know right now. General, will the Union Army do something for me? Anything, my dear. What is it? Just state it. A bathtub, General, filled with hot water and a cake of soap. <laughs> Orderly. Yes, sir. A bathtub, hot water, and soap for Nurse Edmonds, even if you have to send to the White House for it. Yes, sir. Hey, one moment. First, take the following order. All commanders of regiments will prepare to march.
Ladies and gentlemen, Ginger Rogers. I uh, want to read two short entries from the notebook which Nurse Emma Edmonds kept. One day after the Union Army marched, she was able to write, At about 8 o'clock in the morning, our advance guard entered Yorktown. And on the last page of her journal, she wrote, O Lord of righteousness, give us peace which is no counterfeit. Thank you, Ginger Rogers. And now, Bill Hamilton speaking for DuPont. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce Colonel John Stilwell, a trustee and past president of the National Safety Council. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. The man or woman who has a job in industry today is actually safer from injury at work than at home. This in itself says much for industry's safety record. Among American firms, the DuPont Company has for many years maintained a truly outstanding safety record. For seven consecutive years, since 1942, DuPont has received the National Safety Council Annual Award of Honor for Distinguished Service to Safety. I am happy to announce that DuPont's 1949 record has earned the award for the eighth straight year. DuPont is the first organization in the world to win the Safety Council's highest honor eight times in a row. And now it gives me great pleasure to present this eighth award to Mr. Harold L. Miner, manager of the Safety and Fire Protection Division of the DuPont Company. Thank you, Colonel Stilwell. The men and women of the DuPont Company are justifiably proud of their effective work to prevent personal injuries, saving thousands of employees each year from injury, hurt, and suffering. I am happy to accept this Distinguished Service to Safety Award on their behalf. Duplicates of this safety pennant with its white field, green cross, and seven stars will be flown with pride over all DuPont plants and with special pride over our nylon plant at Martinsville, Virginia. This plant is continuing unbroken, the world's best safety record, now over 25 million man-hours without a lost time injury. Our thanks to the National Safety Council, our appreciation and sincere congratulations to all DuPont employees. Thank you, Mr. Miner and Colonel Stilwell for joining tonight's Cavalcade of America program and participating in this presentation of the National Safety Council's Award of Honor to the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. This is Cy Harris reminding you to join us next week when the DuPont Cavalcade will present two stars, Lee Bowman and Ralph Bellamy. Tonight's DuPont play was written by Morton Wishengrad. Ginger Rogers may soon be seen starring in the universal picture The Groom Wore Spurs, Featured in the cast with Miss Rogers was Ozzie Davis as Wilbur. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Voorhees. The program was directed by John Zoller. Ladies and gentlemen, on October 24th, United Nations Day, a 20-ton Freedom Bell will be installed and dedicated in the shadow of the Iron Curtain in Berlin. The bell will have been made possible by Americans in the Crusade for Freedom, a great campaign of truth to communicate our ideals of friendship, freedom, and peace to the people of the world. By joining this Crusade for Freedom, you may help to fulfill the hope inscribed on the Freedom Bell, a paraphrase of Lincoln's words at Gettysburg, that this world, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom. Don't forget next week, Lee Bowman and Ralph Bellamy on the DuPont Cavalcade of America, which comes to you from the Belasco Theater in New York and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Chemistry.